Welcome to Electro Online. Now here we have a very interesting problem. Let's say that we have a 2000 horsepower motor and we need to run it. In order to run it, we need energy. Where would that energy be coming from? Well, let's say that we get the energy liberated from one cubic mile of seawater when we drop the temperature by one degree Celsius. Hmm. In other words, we grab the heat out of it, we somehow convert it into usable energy to run a 2000 horsepower motor. Let's assume 100% efficiency. How long can we run that motor for? Wow, how do we do that? Where do we even start? Well, first of all, we should be able to calculate how much energy is contained in a cubic mile of seawater and how much we can get out of there if we drop the temperature by one degree Celsius. So here we can say that the amount of heat we get out of a cubic mile of seawater is equal to mc times delta t. Now the C of seawater, let's take it as the C of regular water. And so that would be equal to one calorie per gram per Celsius degree which is equal to 4.186 joules per gram per centigrade or Celsius degree, which is equal to 4,186 joules per kilogram per Celsius degree. All right, so that's the specific heat of water. How about the mass of water? Well, it turns out we can use the equation that the density is equal to the mass divided by the volume, which means the mass is equal to the density times the volume. And if we take the density to be 1,000 kilogram per cubic meter, I know that the density of seawater is 1,030 kilograms per cubic meter, but let's just keep it simple. And of course, the volume, that would be equal to a cubic mile. Now, a cubic mile would be 1,609 meters cubed because a mile is equal to 1,609 meters. All right, and that would be the mass of the seawater. So that would be the heat generated. Now we need the power equation. The power is equal to work divided by the time or the energy, uh, delta energy over time. I guess I'm missing a line there, there we go or we could say delta Q over T. And of course, since we're looking for the time, we could then say that the time is equal to the amount of heat liberated from the seawater divided by the power required by the motor. Now the delta Q can be written as MC delta T divided by the power. And of course, in this case, the mass is gonna be equal to the density times the volume, times C, times delta T, divided by the power. All right, I think we're getting close now. Let's calculate the time. The time is equal to the density of seawater, which is 1,000 kilogram per cubic meter. We multiply that times the volume, which is 1,609 meters cubed. That would be the same as a cubic mile. The specific heat was 4,186 joules per, let's see here, per kilogram per centigrade or Celsius degree. And then the change in the temperature, that would be one Celsius degree. And we divide the whole thing by the horsepower, or the power of the, uh, of the motor, which is 2,000 horsepower. Now, of course, we have to convert horsepower to standard units. And a horsepower, uh, let's see, that would be equal to watts. Um, and that would be per horsepower, and that would be uh, 746 watts equivalent to one horsepower. And of course, a watt is a joule per second, so the watt can be converted to a joule per second, and then if one over second in the denominator turns into seconds in the numerator. All right, so finally, the temperature, or not temperature, the time, the total time required equals 1,000 times 1609 cubed times 4,186 divided by 2,000 and divide by 746. And that gives us one point, let's see here, 1.17, 1.17 times 
10 to the 10 seconds. Of course, that doesn't tell us much, so what we're going to do here is convert that into, hmm, well, let's see, days. How about days? So the time is equal to, uh, we divide by 86,400 seconds in a day, so that would give us 135,265 days. And of course, if we convert that to years, there's 365 days in a year or 365 and a quarter. So divide by 365.25 and we get a total of about 370 years. So imagine that we could run a 2000 horsepower motor. That's quite a motor, quite a powerful motor for a total of 370 years out of the energy that we would get by lowering the temperature of a cubic mile of seawater by just one Celsius degree. Now the question might be, well, why don't we do that more often? Look at all that energy that would be in the oceans that we could utilize. Well, there's a couple of problems. First of all, to convert heat into energy, you have to have a heat engine. So you have to somehow build an engine to get that heat out of the, uh, out of the ocean water, and then you do that by allowing the heat to flow through the engine, the, the temperature. So what, what that would mean is you would then utilize the difference in the temperature of one Celsius degree, which would mean you'd get a very, very poor efficiency, a very, very low efficiency by just only having a difference in temperature of one Celsius degree in order to do that. Well, at least it's an interesting problem, maybe not so practical, and that's how it's done.